All right, well, we'll get started. Uh, my name is Lindsay Miller. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Canisius College. Thank you for joining us tonight for, to learn more about the LECOM Early Assurance Program. Uh, joined, joining us is Dr. Allison Backstrom. She is the Director of the Dr. George E. Schreiner Pre-Medical Center at Canisius College, as well as some current students and alumni that you see joining us here um, on the screen. Uh, I want to encourage you, those of you watching, to please and ask questions that you have. Utilize the question and the answer tool at the bottom of the page. Um, we will ask your questions live at the end, or if it's um, something specifically pertaining to what we're talking about, we will um, ask those questions at that time as well. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Backstrom, uh, who will introduce the rest of our panelists. Dr. Backstrom. Thank you, Lindsay. So I'm joined today by Jules Lee, Haley Brenner, and Lindsay Meyer. And I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves. And then I want you to be able to you know, think of questions that you would like um, pre-med students and a medical student to be able to answer. And at the end, we'll all come back together and um, let's, let the students and alumni answer your questions. So Jules, do you want to introduce yourself? Unmute. I'm so sorry. I just clicked the wrong thing. I got a notification. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jules. Um, I'm a senior biology major. I have minors in philosophy and music. Uh, yeah. And Lindsay. Hi, my name is Lindsay. I'm a junior biology major with a Spanish minor. I'm in the all honors program here at Canisius, and I'm also on the cross country and track program. And Haley. Hi guys, my name is Haley. I am a first year medical student at LECOM, Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine in Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, I did the three plus four early assurance program with Canisius. So I finished my three years at Canisius last year and just started at LECOM um, this past July. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to share some slides. And what I'm gonna do is kind of give a little bit of an overview about what this program is and is not, and then um, let, let our panelists here tell a little bit more about the things they've been involved in on their way, how they got involved in this program. And obviously Haley could also uh, talk a little bit about how she was prepared for medical school or not. I'm assuming she was, she's doing fine so far. <laughs> Um, anyway, so yeah, so I'm Allison Backstrom, and I have the privilege of advising our pre-med and pre-health students here at Canisius. Um, my contact information is here. My email is probably the easiest way to get to me, but um, the phone number is there as well. We are back full-time in person. Um, our pre-med center is located in Science Hall, so if you come on a tour at Canisius, hopefully you'll pass by and um, always feel free to stop in and say hello. Okay. And here in the pre-med center, we're working with students um, to really be your advisor who's dedicated to your pre-med or your pre-health track. So for the purpose of our LECOM information session, I'm going to focus on mostly medicine, but really also dental and pharmacy is also an option with LECOM. Okay. Um, so we get students connected to experiences, we offer some special coursework, things like medical terminology, um, leadership in medicine seminar, we have an introduction to healthcare course so that um, students can kind of explore different health professions, a range of things like that. Um, we also organize a lot of service opportunities, um, both domestic and international medical mission trips. Um, social justice in healthcare trips and some local things as well. We work with students all the way through the application process, um, interviews, all of those kinds of things that one has to do to go into uh, the health professions and a whole lot more, but we don't want to, we're not going to focus on all of that tonight. We're going to focus on the LECOM program. Um, a little shout out to Dr. George Schreiner, who is our alum who endowed our pre-med center so that we're able to provide um, lots of support and resources to our pre-health students here. So that's Dr. Schreiner's picture up there. And, um, 
one of his approaches to life was to make bold choices. Okay, so as I've mentioned, we work with students across the health professions. Um, so whole, whole list here um, and more, there are about a hundred or so different health professions. So too many to put on a slide. And we're very proud of how well our students and alumni do in terms of getting into medical and dental school. And we have a really sizable population of pre-med and pre-health students here at Canisius for being a small college. So um, good number of students every year going off to medical and dental and other health professional schools. Okay, so we're here to uh, focus on Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine, which called LECOM. Um, that is the name of the college, but it also has a school of dental medicine, a school of pharmacy, and a biomedical um, type school that has some other programs. And one program that our Canisius students use sometimes is their master's of medical science. I went ahead and listed it here. Um, so we have programs with LECOM that let students go smoothly from our program into LECOM's programs after either three or four years at Canisius. So we'll be talking a little bit more about those. Okay, so we call this an early acceptance program, our EAP. And this really is a way that LECOM offers um, students who are interested in attending their programs for a professional school in medicine, pharmacy, and dentistry, the opportunity to um, secure a seat early, and it is a conditional seat. You have to meet certain requirements along the way, um, but while you're attending an affiliated institution, and so Canisius is an affiliated institution with LECOM, and we've had a, a long and wonderful relationship with them. Um, they know how well prepared our students are. And so they, they take good care of us. Okay, so we talk about the early assurance program in two phases. Um, the first phase is either your three or four years of undergraduate education here at Canisius. And the second phase would be the four years of education at LECOM in medical school or dental school um, or three years if you go into a special primary care track that they have in their medical school. If you know for sure you want to pursue um, primary care, you can actually accelerate your medical school by a year. Okay, so when we talk about these two tracks, when we talk about a four plus four track, this is a track where you would come to Canisius and finish a bachelor's degree before you go to LECOM to start medical or dental school or pharmacy school. Um, and that's really the recommended path for most people. That's generally the amount of time it takes students to you know, really fully develop as a student and an independent learner so that you can go and thrive when you hit medical and dental school. Okay? But we do also have a three plus four track that very highly motivated students can complete. Um, what it involves is doing all of either our core or honors curriculum within the three years. So you have to accelerate that quite a bit. And then you do about three fourths of a science major. So either a chemistry major, we have a chemistry health track major or a biology major. If you wanna major in something else, we have to get special permission, okay? And then after three years here at Canisius, you go off to LECOM, start professional school. And then at the end of that first year, you have a transcript sent back to Canisius. And we recognize the coursework that you have done at LECOM and count it as that last year of your science major. And you then get to graduate with the classmates you started college with. And usually the people you come into college with, many of them become lifelong friends and especially at a smaller place like Canisius. And so being able to graduate with your um, entering classmates is an important part of a college education. And 
the Canisius Alumni Network is fabulous and takes care of each other. So um, we say once a GRIF, always a GRIF. And that's um, especially true in the, in the medical alumni community. Okay, so the requirements for these programs, um, I have here the four plus, you need to have a, an SAT composite score of 1240 or an ACT composite score of 26, and then an unweighted high school average of 3.5. And it is typical right now because of what has happened during COVID for a student to have not taken the SAT or the ACT. You need to take it if you want to apply for this program. Okay. Now, they've been a little flexible, and so we've had some students apply before they take the SAT or the ACT, but you will need to do that before you matriculate at Canisius, okay? And Lindsay can clarify if need be, but um, that would not affect your application to Canisius at all, but it is a necessary step in order to go to the LECOM program. They do not want you taking the SAT or ACT after you start college, okay? And then um, we do have this three plus track, and I'm really focusing on medical and dental. Um, you can do that in the pharmacy program, but um, we're generally more focused on medicine. You need to have a 1340 on your SAT and a 28 on the ACT to be eligible for that program and a slightly higher high school GPA. Okay. Um, LECOM also does not super score test scores. So you need to get these scores in a single sitting when you take either the SAT or the ACT. Okay. And if one of them gives you some trouble, um, it's often, it's kind of curious, but often a student who doesn't do quite as well on one of these tests can do better on the other one because they're, they're just very different tests. So don't be afraid to take both if you need to. Okay, so the process um, is actually pretty darn easy, um, pretty straightforward for applying to come into this program. So you start by completing an inquiry form, and then um, they send you some information to set up an account with them. So you have to set up an account out on their portal, stays with you for you know, your whole time through the Early, assure, uh, early acceptance program, and then once you go off into professional school. Um, then they invite you for an interview if you've met the requirements. And this year, that is a virtual interview, and it's what we call asynchronous, where um, it's a recorded thing. So you're on a camera like this, and you see a prompt that's asking you a question, you hit record, you answer it, and then they're able to watch that on their end at their leisure, okay? Now, assuming you've passed your interview, and I always welcome students to come and practice with us if you want, um, or have you talked to one of these uh, lovely ladies on with us tonight who've been through these things. Um, anyway, if you pass your interview then, um, then the next step is after you've been accepted to Canisius and decided that Canisius is where you want to matriculate, um, you get a Canisius email and you send an email to LECOM from your Canisius email saying, I'm all set, I'm a Canisius student, please send me my provisional acceptance. Okay, And they uh, send a link to my office to approve and then they send you a letter that's called a provisional acceptance. And so then my office is going to be working with you to make sure you do what you're supposed to do here to meet the requirements um, in order to matriculate at LECOM, okay? Um, along the way, you need to receive a positive recommendation from a committee that's on our campus that supports our students going into the medical and dental um, programs, okay? And then off you go. And then four years later, you're a doctor or a dentist. Simple as that. <laughs> um, so what do we want on our end in terms of being willing to approve you into this program? Um, it's really important that you understand osteopathic medicine. Okay? So there are two, two paths to medicine in the United States, osteopathic and allopathic. Most people out there don't even know there are two paths, quite honestly. Most people just know of their doctor as their doctor. Um, but 
allopathic is the path to an MD and osteopathic is the path to something called a DO, doctor of osteopathic medicine. Okay? They all end up in the same place. Um, the residency process now has merged for both the MD and the DO students. They all go through the residency match at the same time. Um, but there are differences in philosophy and differences in how you spend some of your time in medical school, okay? which we can talk about a little bit later if people want to. Okay? Um, we do expect students who are, who are at Canisius in this program to be committed to being fully engaged as a Canisius student on our campus in our community and continue learning about clinical things. So we want everybody in this program to keep getting clinical exposure, keep learning what the doctors do, keep getting interactions with patients. Um, there, it's a lot of change and development that happens in young people between high school and when you finish college. So we need you to keep um, learning about yourself, learning about the profession that you're committing a lifetime to. Okay? Sometimes people change their mind, which is perfectly fine. Um, not everybody who thinks they want to be a doctor at age 18 thinks they want to be a doctor when they're 22, right? And so that's perfectly fine. There's um, a very simple process that um, you can, you know, get out of this program, okay? Um, we do want students to be active in our pre-health organizations on campus, um, hopefully leaders, because in medicine, you're leaders in your community, you're leaders of your healthcare teams. So we want you to get that practice here. Um, I've already mentioned continuing to learn about the profession. Okay. Now, students can apply into these programs in high school at the same time you apply to Canisius or during your first year or your second year of college. Okay. But you do need to be what we call an affiliate, so in the program, for two years. So if you're interested in the three plus program, you either apply in high school or your first year of college. If you're interested in the four plus program, you can be in the, uh, you can apply into the program as late as your sophomore year. Okay. Um, so once you come to Canisius, we call these standards for matriculation. So at Canisius, these are the things you need to do. Okay, so you have to meet all of their academic criteria. So you need to maintain um, cumulative GPAs of 3.4 overall, or 3.5 if you're in the three plus track. And in your sciences, you need to keep at least a 3.2. Okay. That's about one A for every two Bs is about what that grade point average is. But the overall GPA needs to be higher. So you really want to shoot for at least, you know, half A's and half B's. Okay. Um, I mentioned earlier, you do need to be a science major unless we get special permission for you to major outside of the sciences. Okay. Um, they do have something called an academic index score that is a ratio. It's a formula that's based on your grade point average and your SAT or ACT score. And you have to hit a certain number on that in order to not have to take the MCAT, okay? Um, and that's one of the benefits that we'll talk about. But if you keep these grade point averages and you have those SAT or ACT scores coming into the program, you'll be fine, okay? Um, if you apply after you come to Canisius, then they're gonna be looking at your Canisius GPA when you apply. So if for some reason high school has not been great, which during COVID is a very real possibility because of the challenges that everyone faced during COVID. Um, but if you can get a decent score on your SAT or ACT, you can come to Canisius, you really get a fresh start, right? Your, your GPA in college is not what your GPA in high school was. You get to start over. So even if, you're, if your GPA right now is a little rough, you could still have another go at this program. If you did not get accepted into this program right away, you could still apply again. So um, anyway, so if you meet these metrics, then you would not need to take the medical college admissions test. 
And they also waive the PCAT, that's the pharmacy college admissions test. Okay. The dental school does require you to take the dental admissions test and you have to meet specific scores on that test an academic average of 18, whatever that means, right? It's just a standard test score. Um, and some subscores on the individual sections, which we could talk about um, you know, when you're getting ready to study for the DAT. Um, they do require everyone to attend something they call Affiliates Day, which is where you learn a lot more about the school and its programs and the various education pathways. And then they have a new program that I'm excited about. I think um, students are really gonna love this. The spring semester before you would start medical school, they have a, it's kind of a shortened anatomy class and it's virtual so that everybody can participate in it, but it, it really is gonna um, help students adjust a little bit better to medical school. Okay. So again, that, that course is the spring prior to when you would start at LECOM. Um, you're going to kind of get a sense then of what the content and the pace of learning in medical school is. Okay, this is not a graded course, by the way, um, but they really want to try to help set you on a road to success. And Haley on the call tonight here can tell you um, the pace of anatomy, which is the first thing they learn in medical school. Um, they also would give you some quizzes so that you start to get a sense of how test questions are structured in medical school. And those are very often structured in a way that they align with the board exams that you're going to be taking as part of your medical, medical education. And then they also um, want to have mentoring sessions to kind of, you know, help you develop some study strategies and ways to cope with the stress of medical school. So I think this is a very positive thing that they've added. Okay. Now, um, there are some things that are undergoing some, I'm calling it an evolution with LECOM. Um, historically, they have preserved or reserved five seats in each of the programs, medical, dental, and pharmacy for Kenesha students. Um, a couple of years ago, they upped that to 10 seats because you know, as students come into college and grow and change, sometimes they don't stay with this program because they've, you know, found a, a direction that's a better fit for them. Um, and so they had upped our seat capacity to 10. Right now, they're undergoing some shifts in how they do things. So I'm not going to have all the answers right now, except to say that um, if we have hit our seat limit for if you know if you're high school students applying or if we have say somebody in our first year of college applying and so each year of college we have you know five seats or the 10 seats depending on how they count this um, if the seats are full what they will do is send you a note and say seat capacity has been hit but just because the seats full doesn't mean you don't, you can't have, uh, I'll say, easy access to LECOM. So if you've met the requirements, even if you weren't in one of those seats, they will guarantee an interview in your final year, as long as you meet those academic requirements. Okay, so this is all evolving. They just rolled out some of these ideas about three weeks ago. And so, you know, keep in touch and I can always get you up to date as I, as I learn more. But right now, um, we have seat space available. Okay, So I think there are tremendous benefits of a program like this. Um, you know what your future path is. Um, one of the reasons I think it's most advantageous is it gives you time to take advantage of things that are very difficult to do when you're on a pre-med or pre-dental path because there's so much to do when you're in college. Um, MCAT preparation, DAT preparation, shadowing, just the time commitment to do applications to medical or dental school is kind of ridiculous. Um, so this really lightens things up on that front and it can give you time to study abroad. That's my own one regret from undergraduate school is I did not, I wasn't smart enough to take advantage of study abroad. Um, I make up for it now by taking students abroad. Um, but if you're a student athlete, it can 
make life a, a bit smoother there because it gives you more time for your sport. Um, you can participate in the arts. Um, you can take coursework that you've always wanted to take that's not a pre-med requirement. Um, all kinds of interesting things. More time to do research, more time to be involved in the community. Okay. You do save quite a bit of money. Um, lots of, there's a lot of cost involved in applying to medical and dental school as well. Um, and you really have an opportunity to build a relationship with your professional school for years before you start there. And so you start knowing a heck of a lot more about what you're getting into. And I think that's, that's very nice. Okay, um, before I start the panel here, I will say, you know, that I do think there are also some disadvantages to a program like this. Um, one of them is this notion of, do you keep um, focused on becoming your best, like the best version of yourself while you're in college, right? Who am I? What are my interests? What do I want to do in the world? What is the difference I want to make in the world? Sometimes I think if you get, you know, you get tracked into something like this very early, maybe you lose sight of some of that. Um, so that's part of why I want, you know, I expect you to be very involved at Kenesha so that you're still bumping into these other things that make someone a whole person and might make you a better contributor to our community and to society. So I think that's one disadvantage. Um, the only other real disadvantage that I can imagine, I don't know that it's a real one, is, you know, when you go into these health professions, you have to get a license, right? And your license is based on standardized exams that are big, right? High stakes exams. So I do worry just a little bit that um, even though the MCAT is not a good predictor of how well someone will do in medical school, it's how well you do in the courses, right? So your grades are what predict you being successful in medical school and on the board exams. Um, but you know, you'll hit this, the end of your second year of medical school and you'll be preparing for these, for the board exams. And that's the first time you've had an exam of this magnitude that is this important. And so I worry a little bit that sometimes if you haven't been through that experience, the stress of preparing for that might be overwhelming. And so I think, you know, Sometimes students even have to retake the MCAT because they didn't do very well, but that helps build resilience, right? So if you're not doing an MCAT prep for a program like this, I would always be pushing you to maybe push yourself in ways that make you uncomfortable in some other aspect so that if it doesn't go well, it's, you realize it's okay that things weren't perfect and you can pick yourself up and keep going. Um, super important um, personal trait to have going into health professions because everybody makes mistakes. Hopefully not too many, but every physician, every dentist at some point is going to make a mistake in their life and have to get up and keep going. <laughs> so those would be my only um, concerns, if you want to call them that, about this kind of program. But by and large, wonderful opportunities. Okay. So let's see, so um, Lindsay Miller, I should I have to start using some last names here since we have two, um, two Lindsay's on with us. Are there any questions or anything that I should be addressing before we jump into a panel discussion with our students? We had, at we had one um, question come through, but Haley answered it um, in the chat. It was just a question on whether um, students had to be committed to, to, to Canisius in order to apply to LECA. So, ah. yeah. Okay, right. So not at the moment. <laughs> um, what I don't know yet, as if things evolve this cycle, which I don't know for sure that they will in terms of how they try to um, shift the timing of acceptances and things. Um, I really don't know how that's going to influence things, but um, I think it'll work out fine one way or the other. So yeah, so usually on the, the application that you put into this program, you rank three, up to three undergraduate schools that you're interested in as part of that process. So 
Of course, we hope you'll put Canisius as number one. Okay, okay so great. So let me um, now turn to our current and past early acceptance program affiliates. Um, so I'm gonna ask each of our participants to share how they got interested in LECOM and this early assurance or early affiliates, sorry, early acceptance program. So how did you get interested in it? And at what stage did you apply? Roughly, I know it's been a while for some of you. <laughs> so why don't we start with Lindsay? I think you were our most recent applicant. I think so too. <laughs> um, so one of the reasons I chose going to Canisius is because of the LECOM acceptance program. Um, I didn't apply right out of high school though because I just wasn't there yet for myself. And I recognized that I wasn't right there yet to readily apply myself and be accepted to a medical school as like an 18, 19 year old. Um, but the reason I went to Canisius is because I knew that was still an option for me to figure out with my first two years of undergrad. So I applied pretty late in my sophomore year. I actually started applying, I think, March of my sophomore year, which was pretty late. But as long as you initiate the application before you end your sophomore year, you're OK. So I didn't get my LECOM acceptance until I think the end of July before my junior year, which I'm in right now. But because I started the application in sophomore year, it was OK. Um, I finally decided I wanted to do it because I really needed to figure out the difference between DO and MD. And as Dr. Baxter was saying, some of the coursework is a little bit different in med school that you undergo um, between being an MD or a DO. So through shadowing and just talking to a lot of different people like upperclassmen and just getting exposure, I realized DO is really what I wanna do. And I realized that I do really wanna to go to med school. So I ended up applying and I got accepted. So that was my story, but it's okay to take your time and not apply directly out of high school. Um, don't feel rushed into it. I had a lot of friends that went to Canisius who applied like the day after high school graduation or like right before they even graduated high school. And it was okay for me to not be there yet. It's okay to do things at your own pace because you still have that chance to like figure out what you want to do. That was my application. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> and Jules. Uh, so um, I actually applied uh, when I was in high school. I applied uh, my senior year. Um, and when I applied, I was three, four, and I was three, four all the way up till the beginning of my junior year. Um, but uh, how I actually became interested in uh, the LECOM program was my primary care physician is actually a LECOM graduate. Um, so she told me a little bit about LECOM as a school. And then as I was doing like my own research, I then figured out that they had an early affiliate program. So I decided to apply. Uh, so I did. And here I am. And I'll just point out, so uh, Jules is saying she was in the three plus program and there is an option to go into that and switch to the four plus. So as you'll hear- I'll talk about it a little more later, but yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> um, she did a switch, so, okay. And Haley. Um, so I actually also like Jules applied when I was in high school, I was a senior in high school. Um, so I knew pretty early on that medicine was what I wanted to do. I applied to the three plus four program um, and then spent my three years at Canisius. And now I'm a first year at LECOM. Um, let's see, were there any other, any other questions? <laughs> um, why LECOM? Oh, okay, yes, um, actually, so I went to a open house at Canisius. And then when I marked down that I was interested in medicine, um, they he sent me a letter in the mail saying, hey, we see that you're interested in medicine. Um, why don't you look at this LECOM program? And I didn't know what LECOM was at the time. And I looked at the letter and I was like, you know, I might want to go to Canisius, but I don't want to be a DO. I, I want to be an MD. And my mom looked at me and she was like, Haley, do you even know what a DO is? And I was like, all right, mom, I guess I don't. And so she, I did my research. I figured out the difference between DO, MD. I realized that DO kind of aligned with what I wanted out of um, a medical profession. And so I applied to the program, I got in, and then I, then I applied to Canisius. So I actually applied to Canisius after um, 
the LECOM program and then got into Canisius and that's kind of how that worked. Great. Okay, why don't we go in the same order and maybe um, talk a little bit about some of the experiences that are some of the things that you're either are or in Haley's case were involved in on campus at Canisius. So we'll start with Lindsay. Okay, so on all right. So on campus involvement, um, like Dr. Backstrom said, even if you're accepted to this program, you really should still try to be as involved with things related to the health profession, not specifically like the medical field, but just to get that exposure and keep it kind of current with you. Um, so for me, I'm part of our pre-health society, um, Society of Pre-Health Professionals is what it's called, and I'm also involved in Tri Beta. Tri Beta is a nationally recognized club, so if you actually go onto their website, you can type your name in and you can see yourself on a website that you're nationally recognized, which is really cool. Um, I'm on the e-board of that. Um, I also TA, I'm a bio lab TA for intro bio, so that's really Really good because I get to help students. I have students emailing me asking for help on their assignments and their labs and things like that. So it's good just to get the exposure of like helping people, talking with people like your peers, you know, kind of like group work because a lot of our bio classes here are really involved with group work. Um, also, as I said before, I do run cross country and track, which was another reason why this program was really good for me because the MCAT takes a lot of preparation. Um, there's a ton of hours that you need to put into it. And my um my season goes year round so i'm from fall all the way till spring so a i feel like it would have maybe caused conflict with my athletics but of course academics comes first so i would have had to made some hard choices which would have kind of sucked but um so i'm involved in that and overall there's a ton of things you can get involved in on campus um there's so many clubs and there's really a lot of opportunities especially in research um i've been a part of dr costanzo's research lab group since i was a sophomore um i started the summer before sophomore year um so i might have a published research paper by the end of my senior year which would be great going into med school i can be like oh i also have a published paper and it's been something i've been working on for a few years so it's pretty cool to see the progression of the project that i've been involved with so also because you're already accepted to something you have a lot of time for these extra activities as dr baxton was describing and you can have a little bit more free time to kind of figure out other interests and like she said going on like study abroad and trips and things like that but yeah definitely campus involvement is a big thing for me and I made a lot of my friends through these clubs and things like that. Jules. Um, I'm involved in a lot uh, let's see here so uh, I'm super involved uh, with uh, the music program here on campus. Uh, I'm the president of our chamber orchestra and our music scholars program. Um, so I do a lot of that. I play bassoon, if anyone knows what that is. Um, and uh, I'm also the vice president of our uh, gay advocacy, advocacy club on campus. It's called Unity. Um, it's really fun. Uh, what else do I do? Oh, um, I also uh, do research. Um, I actually do have a published paper. Uh, I've been doctor. I've been in Dr. Hauser's lab since I was a freshman. And actually, uh, during the summer going into my sophomore year, I was actually able to travel to St. Louis with the research team and do research there. Um, and then I was able to present on that research in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, at a bacterial phage conference. Um, so now that paper's published, so you can look it up. I'm a published author. Uh, so yeah, I was at that actually happened my junior year but um yeah having a lecom program here has allowed me to like take advantage of different minors and also be able to take that time to do that research so you're in little theater <laughs> you're so right i am i am also in little theater i was mrs white and clue <laughs> Haley. all right um so when i was at canisius I was involved in the Society of Pre-Health Professionals. Um, I was also very involved um, on eboard with our acapella group on campus, um, the Crescendons. So kind of like Jules, I really wanted to keep um, a music background kind of going, even with you know science and everything going on. I really wanted a little bit of music still in my life because um, I was really involved in that in high school. 
And a really good part of this program was that I was able to spend that time doing other things. So I was actually the president of our acapella group, which is a big time commitment and something I don't think I would have been able to um, do as well if had it not been for this program. Um, I was also, well, we're just talking on campus. Um, hmm, what else on campus? You were in Little Theater. You were oh, I was in Little theater. theater too. Oh yeah, okay. I was in a couple shows in our Little Theater program. Um, you're also an admissions tour guide. I was a tour guide. That was so much fun. I don't even count that as an activity. It was like my little job on the side. It was so fun. So I was a tour guide um, for Kanisha's admissions. That was a blast. We would work open houses and um, answer pretty much any questions that any high schoolers would have, um, give tours around and everything. That was super fun. Um, I think that that was, I think that that was it. If other things come up, we can uh, jump back to them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll mix it up a little bit and start with Jules this time. Um, tell about, is there something that you are involved in off campus or, you know, employment or something like that that you think is uh, sort of helping you develop and, and grow as a person on your way to medical school? Oh, yeah. Um, I actually is um... related or not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate. My mother's actually an optometrist and she owns, she owns her own business. So I do her charting for her. Uh, and I also, I make glasses for little kids. I want to be a pediatrician. So uh, I get to work with children in a medical setting, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, all through actually last year, uh, because of COVID, I was living at home. So I was also working. Um, so I was able to do that, uh, which was really cool. And I definitely think it helped me grow. Um, while I was in high school, I was also an EMT. So yeah. And Lindsay? Okay, so three things I'm involved with off campus that I feel like has helped prepare me for med school or is still preparing me. Um, first, I scribe at Dent Neurological. Um, that is a neurological center. It's a, called Dent Tower. It's about 10 minutes away from Kenesha, so it's really close. And I scribe um, with a doctor, but I've also been doing some scribing with a nurse practitioner. So I feel like that's been really helpful because I get to see other aspects of the medical field, not just what a doctor does. I'm also in a developmental neurobiology class this semester. So I tried to pair it up my internship with my class because a lot of the things we're talking about in my bio class we're actually being discussed in real life with patients. So it's pretty cool to know like the pathways and how the diseases work from my class when the doctor's talking to the patients about multiple sclerosis or NMO or any other demyelinating disease like that. So that was really interesting. I also volunteer and now work at Cedar Pediatrics. It is a pediatric center, one doctor only, um, five minutes from Canisius and that one's really good because it's given me exposure to underserved populations in the health community. Um, Dr. Fretz is the pediatrician there and she's really big on taking patients with like Medicare, Medicaid, um, a lot of also people that don't have insurance, like she works with them. So she's really awesome. And then not medicine related, but I do work at a bike shop and I really enjoy biking. Um, so that also, I do that once a week right now while I'm in school, but it's nice to do something else besides medicine all the time, you know, definitely grow your hobbies and do things you're still interested in. And I would say that really helps me with talking to people, customer service aspect, which will be helpful in medical school because sometimes you you want to say things that you can't and that's really helping me to work with people through their problems well okay so developing a filter excellent <laughs> okay Haley what were some things that you were involved in off campus so I um, off campus, I was incredibly lucky to get to work with um, Dr. Stu Kersky. So he was a Canisius alum, LECOM alum, and he is a current LECOM professor. Um, so I worked with him for about two years throughout college. Um, I actually still work for him uh, remotely. So I was his scribe, medical assistant, and um, eventually started learning medical billing. So that is kind of how I still work for him now remotely. Um, I do all of his medical billing. He's the only physician at his practice. 
Um, he specifically does osteopathic manipulations, which um, is kind of like the really big differentiating factor between a DO and an MD. DOs can um, do a fellowship in neuromusculoskeletal medicine where we learn these manipulations. Um, a little bit similar to chiropractics, but there's also some differences. I can talk about that later if anyone's interested, but um, I got to work with him which was just an absolutely incredible experience and definitely gave me, um, I would say a leg up, especially in OPP for school now. Um, I, I really know a lot of the techniques that we're learning in school. So it's gives me a little bit of a break uh, in between all the other classes. Um, and then aside from that, like Lindsay said, I also had other jobs outside of medicine um, that definitely kind of kept me doing things that I like to do. So I was a lifeguard at the beach over the summers. Um, I also worked in a nursing home as a personal care aide. Um, I did that for a few years and past meds. Um, I love old people. So it was, it was great for me. And um, yeah, that is it. Another thing that I did that I don't really know where to qualify this is on or off campus, but it was through the Society of Pre-Health Professionals with Dr. Backstrom. Um, we went on several different mission trips. So I went to Costa Rica with Dr. Backstrom um, and we set up different, I don't know if like you'll talk about that in a little bit. Do you want me to talk about that go now? Go ahead, go ahead, sure. All right, wonderful. So we went on this trip to Costa Rica where we basically got to set up different medical clinics um, in areas that have very low access to healthcare. A lot of times we were dealing with Nicaraguan refugees. Um, that was, an incredible experience, definitely something that I've never seen before. We got to provide medical care, dental care, even veterinary care. So um, we got to help with some spay and neutering of animals, which was really interesting, something I thought I would never get to kind of take part in. And we also did a social justice trip to Washington, DC, where we got to um, volunteer at a shelter for people experiencing homelessness. And um, that was definitely also an eye-opening experience and definitely rewarding and something that you can also talk about uh, when you get to medical school and even further down the road, it gives you a really unique perspective on medical care and just wellness overall. Great. Um, let's see, it, now anybody who wants to, um, if you want to say a little bit about how you, um, not necessarily how you chose your major, although you could if you want, but if you added something in, right? A couple of you mentioned minors. Um, maybe talk about how that came about. <laughs> I can go. So um, I actually picked up both my minors uh, after like starting Echinacea. So I did not declare either one of them at the beginning. So that's kind of cool because uh, this program luckily gives you the opportunity to have flexibility in your schedule enough so that you can declare a new minor if you'd like to. Um, so I picked up my music minor when I was a freshman, and then I picked up a philosophy minor actually my junior year. So I'm still finishing that one out. But uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy doing both of them. They're both things I'm very passionate about. Uh, and I'm really thankful that I was able to minor in those things. So yeah. And Lindsay? Um, yeah, I'll go next. Um, so I'm a biology major and my minor is Spanish. Um, I, like Jules, also didn't come into Canisius with a Spanish minor. I feel like it's very uncommon to like know exactly what you want your minor to be because there's so many options with minors, um, specifically like because I'm doing the honors program, um, a lot of some of my Spanish classes actually overlap with some of my honors classes, which was really helpful that I figured out um, to kind of lighten my course load a little bit sophomore year with the biochem and orgo. Um, I would decide to do Spanish because I've taken Spanish since I was in kindergarten um, unlike most who kind of started middle school so it's something that's always been a part of me um, and that I really wanted to take with me at least to just keep my skills going keep them refined and it's just something interesting I think that your minor should be something that like you're really interested in um, because it's kind of it's kind of like on the side because obviously your major is the big part but your minor is still there with you so definitely just choose something interesting that you want to do it doesn't have to be like bio or medicine related it can be something else like Jules is doing music and philosophy which is great and then I'm doing Spanish so there's definitely other bio minors as well but it was just nice to have something a class that wasn't just all bio all day um something more relaxed and a little bit more fun for me at least because i really love speaking spanish that's how i 
picked up my minor after I started talking to my advisor of, well, what did you do in high school? And I was like, well, I took Spanish for a while. And they were like, well, we have a Spanish minor. <laughs> so that, that worked out. Let's see. So Haley uh, sped through Kanisha, so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but um so no I, minor if i remember right i didn't i did not have time to pick up a minor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no minor um but one thing that i did would have done if it wasn't for covid is i kind of i started canisius um with my plan to pretty much finish everything in two and a half years rather than three so that i could study abroad my last semester and just have one last take unfortunately due to covid i studied abroad but um the schedule would have allowed for it. So I guess that's the most important part is you do have that flexibility, even in a program like the three years. Um, and I was a chemistry major because that did fit better with that kind of a plan for me. Um, I know a lot of people in pre med are bio majors, but chemistry is cool too. No, yeah, yeah. Here at Kanish is like the, um, the chem department has less requirements for like upper electives. So it's easier to fit it into three years. Good. Um... Is there anything that I should ask the three of you to share that you want to share? I think you covered a lot. I well, I was just going to talk briefly about, I, I'd mentioned it just a little bit, um, but I was just going to kind of talk about um, how I was 3-4 all, all the way up till my junior year, uh, and then I switched to 4-4, four, four, uh, and I'll just kind of like explain a little bit why. Uh, but um, I, uh, I had all my requirements already. I was all ready to go to med school. Um, but uh, because of COVID, I kind of, I was at home uh, for my last, what would have been my last year at Canisius. Um, and uh, I think it kind of speaks to the quality of the school that this is, but I really love going to school here. And uh, the music department was pretty much completely halted. Uh, and I didn't get to play in any of my ensembles. And I was just, I didn't want it to be my last year here. Uh, so I decided to take another year and it also allowed me to pick up uh, another minor, which was pretty fun. Um, but uh, I think it kind of, I don't know, um, it, it kind of speaks to, uh, Kanisha's really prepared me and I would have been ready to go after three years if I wanted to, uh, but I really love going to school here. And I think anybody who would wanna go to school here would have a really great time. Um, I have a lot of friends here uh, and I've learned a lot from all the different things I've been able to do. So uh, now, you know, that COVID's a little bit different. Uh, I'm glad that I'm able to experience those things again, like for my senior year. So, yeah, but there is flexibility, uh, which is an important thing uh, that I was able to all the way up to my junior year. I was literally getting ready to submit my application for the school I was going to go to. I was like, wait, I don't really know if I actually want to leave. I think I kind of just want to stay put. Um, so uh, if you if you decide as late as I did that you're like, I think I'd like to stay. It's really OK. Like they will work with you. That's definitely, I think, important is knowing that like there are different options. So you figure out what's right for you. So what was right for me or what was right for Jules? You right. know, we're two different people. It was two different things. And that's definitely fine. And Canisius and Lee Com both work with you. And I think she used the word flexible. That's definitely a big benefit to this type of a program. And Haley, were you prepared? How are, yes. how are you going? <laughs> <laughs> things are going well um I was definitely prepared for to come in even after three years uh, med school's hard no matter what three years of undergrad four years of undergrad um either way I mean it is a difficult journey I'm not gonna sit here and say that it isn't but I do feel like Kanisha's prepared me as well as I could have been for medical school um one thing that LECOM does have that a lot of other schools kind of don't that I think is kind of important to know is we have different learning pathways. Um, so you can choose to be lecture based learning or problem based learning, um, directed study or the accelerated primary care pathway, which Dr. Backstrom touched on a little bit earlier. So I would say the majority of Kenesha students that end up going to LECOM are lecture based, which is the most amount of people at the Erie campus are lecture based. It's just like you sit in class, um, you take your tests every week. That's kind of the way it is. But I am actually PBL, which is problem-based learning. So kind of what Lindsay was saying, um, that there's a lot of group work at Canisius, that I would say benefited me significantly being PBL because what we do is we meet in groups and we're presented 
our um, information as a case. So we kind of do case-based studies where we then pick chapters to learn off of. And it is definitely like cooperative and you have to be able to work with other people and work in a team. You do evaluate each other um, at the end of each case. And so that I would say specifically, I was really prepared by Canisius to do that with all the group work and being able to talk to people. And I think Canisius makes you more of a well-rounded student rather than just a good science student. And that's kind of why I loved Canisius and why Canisius definitely prepared me for med school. Yeah, so, no, the PPL thing is super cool. I don't like, I like Kaylee didn't like you, you hyped it up as much as it should be. I'm actually going to be PPL when I go to, I'm going to go to Lecom at Elmira, but like a PPL is such a cool thing. Uh, and like, I know Canisius is going to prepare me like super well for it because of how much group work we have to do. But uh, if you, one thing I will suggest, look into PBL. It's really cool. It's really cool how they work it. Right, so we've heard two campus mentioned, um, Erie and Elmira. Lindsay, do you know which campus you're going to request yet? So I'm still a little on the fence. I think I'm leaning more towards Erie, but I'm not set in stone yet. <laughs> <laughs> Things are opening up. Hopefully we can do a yeah. vote and visit some. <laughs> yeah, I would like to go trap, like take a look at the campuses first, because I know what sold me on Canisius was like actually going on the tour and like physically walking around because you can only see so much in videos and like pictures and like hearing other people talk about it. So I think if I can actually get down to the campuses and like see for myself, I think I'll know exactly. But I also am planning on doing PBL because lecture-based learning just like I'm a very visual person and like hands-on so that's also one of the reasons why I really like LeCom because they actually had that and I think I'm going to benefit more from that than just going through lecture slides by myself kind of things like that I really like working with other people and hands-on learning kind of clicks more with me in my head I understand it better so that's also a really I want to say two things about that. Um, first of all, I just want to say, like, I know you've really been hyping up PBL, but um, LDP, which is the lecture discussion pathway, lecture also is very helpful for people who learn that way. So that, like, while PBL might work for me or Jules or Lindsay, it definitely doesn't work for everybody. Um, it is a lot of being on your own, being able to be motivated to do that, whereas some people enjoy the structure of lecture-based learning, which is really nice. Um, LECOM has that flexibility to kind of choose what individual learning style you have. Um, and then Lindsay, if you want to visit the Erie campus, I, I was a great tour guide. You can ask our admissions counselor right here, <laughs> um, but I'd love to show you around LECOM. Haley, I, I would love a tour of LECOM. That would be great. Okay. <laughs> you have to show me, you have to tell me how your Bradenton to Florida like trip goes. If you're going to visit them all, like and get them yeah, all. Let I me know how Bradenton like, is. It looks really pretty. Like a lot of people don't talk about the Bradenton one as much and I don't I don't know exactly why so I just want to get down there <laughs> and what's funny to to is Florida, so. if you go to Erie and you see the architecture you can imagine Bradenton right so in Erie you can look out the window and see Lake Erie in Bra in Bradenton the architecture is the same but you look out the window and you see palm trees and a big pond and if you had your binoculars, you'd be able to read the warning about the alligators. That sounds nice. <laughs> so anyway. Okay, Lindsay, are there, uh, Lindsay Miller, are there any other questions or anything that we should address tonight? No other questions. I think you all have covered a lot and provided a lot of information. So um, I okay. think if you, if you guys feel like you've covered what you needed to, I think we're all set. Okay. I would just say in closing that probably, you know, what I think is one of the most important um, contributors to the success of our students getting into medical and dental school is you are surrounded by lovely, motivated, helpful young people like those three you see tonight. And being in that environment instead of, you know, trying to always compete with each other or, you know, one up someone, 
you know, grading on a curve, those kinds of things um, that sometimes are part of either a college or a university or pre-med paths and stuff. Um, I'm grateful to have young people like these three who, you know, really are helping each other all the way through and motivating each other all the way through. Because, you know, this is a long path. And so you want to have peers around you who are like-minded and are working hard and are taking it seriously so that you can all achieve what you've set out to achieve. So ladies, it's always wonderful to see you. Um, I will organize a van trip down to Erie since they are now taking small groups for tours. So Lindsay, we could uh, get one of those together on a Friday. Mm -hmm. I would love it. <laughs> you guys would have to let me know when you're here. <laughs> we will. <laughs> All right. We, well, we can go to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for your time tonight. Um, and best of luck to the three of you in your future endeavors. And thank you so much, Dr. Backstrom, for your time tonight. Always a pleasure. Um, anyone who has questions about this, my contact is up here again. Um, send me an email and we can talk you through the next steps. All right. Sounds great. Thank all you. Right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening.